Hi guys, I'm Seat from Warhawk Defense. We have an excellent video today. We are going to see some great footage. But before we proceed, I want to say something about the voice thing or about the voice affair. Because in the previous uh, video, a uh, majority of the comments were about the voice that is used or about me, which are showing now on the channel and about the old voice. I'm not going to explain that again, we have said we are going with this type of format with a combination of my appearance and, and the old voice and I think that we are closing that matter for now but I am listening to you, we have a debate and that's very important to see all opinions as I said we have a great footage today, let's start Here we have an repelling of a large-scale Russian assault in Kupian direction Russian were planning to take one of the settlements in the Kupian direction. First, they were allowed into the settlement, and then the gradual destruction of the enemy's equipment and manpower began. Suckers. Yesterday morning, another assault on the farm was repulsed in the area of Novomikhailivka village. Russians have been trying to assault this farm and a cemetery every day for months now to gain a foothold for the assault of the village itself. Below, drone follows a Russian vehicle trying to escape. That didn't end well for them. In Krinky, another Russian TOS-1 is lightly wounded. By the way, the TOS-1 Buratino is a heavy flamethrower system of a Soviet 220mm 30 or 24 barrel system. The multiple rocket launcher is capable of using thermobaric warheads mounted on a T-72 or T-90 tank chassis. TOS-1 was designed to attack enemy fortified positions and lightly armored vehicles and transports, particularly in open terrain. The system's first combat tests took place in 1988 and 1989 in the Panjshir Valley during the Soviet-Afghan War. The TOS-1 was shown for the first time in public in 1999 in Omsk. TOS-1 is not assigned to the artillery units of the Russian Armed Forces, but is found in Russian nuclear biological chemical protection troops. Do you remember Yevgeny Prigozhin, the chief of Wagner who lost his entire force fighting in Bakhmut and later almost demilitarized Putin? Well, he didn't end well. 
at the end he was eliminated by Russian Tsar, but now we have new details about his murder. Prigozhin's murder was organized by Nikolai Patrushev, Secretary of the Security Council of Russia, writes the Wall Street Journal. According to the WSJ, Patrushev warned Putin that relying on Prigozhin and his mercenaries in the war with Ukraine was giving Prigozhin more and more influence and posing a threat to the Kremlin. When Prigozhin started the mutiny, Patrushev saw it as an opportunity to get rid of the PMC head permanently. Patrushev started warning Putin about the danger of Prigozhin back in the summer of 2022, according to the WSJ. But Putin did not listen to him as the Wagnerites were making progress on the battlefield. According to the publication's interlocutor, a former Russian intelligence officer that changed in October 2022. That's when Prigozhin allegedly called Putin and complained in crude terms about ammunition shortages leading to heavy casualties. Patrushev was in Putin's office at the time, the WSJ source claims. The head of the Security Council felt that Prigozhin had become dangerous and no longer respected the Kremlin's authority. Putin ignored Prigozhin's subsequent complaints about the supply and including public conflicts with Russia's military leadership and did not answer any calls from the head of the PMC, the WSJ writes. In June 2023, when Prigozhin started the mutiny, Patrushev took control, according to the material. The head of the Security Council called officers sympathetic to Prigozhin and asked them to persuade the head of Wagner PMC to stop the mutiny, according to the WSJ sources. Patrushev was also looking for mediators to resolve the conflict in neighboring countries. In addition to Lukashenko, who eventually became such a mediator, it was the president of Kazakhstan, Kasim Jomart Tokayev. In case the Russian army could not contain the mercenaries, Kazakhstan's armed forces were supposed to help. As a return favor for the introduction of CSTO forces in January 2022, the WSJ sources claim. Tokayev, however, refused. After the rebellion ended, Petrushev began to develop an assassination plan. According to the publication sources from Western intelligence services, Putin was later shown these plans and he did not object. On August 23rd, the head of the PMC waited at Sheremetyevo airport until his plane was checked and prepared for departure. At that moment, a small bomb was planted under the wing, according to the WSJ interlocutors in the Western Intelligence Services. The bomb exploded half an hour after takeoff at an altitude of about 8,500 meters. All 10 people on board were killed. The Kremlin denies involvement in Prigozhin's death. What do you think about this? Well, I hope you like this video. We will see each other again tomorrow with a new update. Comment, like, subscribe, become our member and don't forget, stay strong. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warthog Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members only videos and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description. Rescues. Every day we had a guy last week at six rescues in six days. You know, he's doing the job every day.